Uh, our next presenter is uh, Dr. Shuman Gangobi. Uh, Shuman Gangobi is the Associate Professor and ex chairman of the Department of Applied Chemistry and Chemical Engineering at Chittagong University. Uh, you can present your care about yourself and the start. Well, uh, I feel honored to be here and thanks uh, my honorable uh, teachers and uh, as well as audience in the uh, large screen. Large screen. So today I'd like to talk about this uh, better than this Then Okay, okay, okay. This is the second slide. In fact, uh, you can visit the uh, University of Chitang here, some of the snapshot. So, uh, 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 nano, uh, for, for, for IR, you know, the uh, nano uh, has quite a range of applications, and this is why we are working on nanotechnology or nanomaterials to combat with the four IR. So next ball, next ball, only Next one. So, uh, what uh, the is nano bloom? Why nano is blooming now? Because uh, uh, scientists were invented transmission electron microscope, and before that, uh, scanning electron microscope, and later on, AFM, atomic force microscope. And uh, uh, all scientists were awarded by Nobel Prize because of the because of their invention. Okay, next. And uh, types of nanoparticles. Now, there are many types of nanoparticles, but uh, in our case, we are working on metallic nanoparticles. So I will not go into the detail. So next. And then uh, next, uh, next slide. So we are working on green synthesis. Nanoparticles can be synthesized by many ways, especially physical method, chemical method, but we are working on Green synthesis, which is actually environment friendly. So, why green synthesis? Green synthesis actually, uh, as I mentioned, it is environment friendly, it is easily uh, applicability, it is a simple process. Uh, by comparing, if we compare it to the chemical method, because in the chemical method, we can use some kind of hazardous chemicals, so that in this case, we are not using such type of hazardous chemicals, we are using just uh, environment friendly uh, precursor. Okay, next. We are using uh, plant materials. Next. So, uh, you know, we can control the size of the nanoparticles because nanoparticle size, uh, we can, uh, according to the definition, we say it should be uh, within 100 nanometer. But uh, uh, size is very important parameter. We can control size uh, by changing pH, by changing temperature. Even we can uh, change the reaction interval. But uh, in our case, we did not change any pH, temperature, or reaction interval. We just using plant, but different plant. Next, next, next. This is the plant that we have used. We have collected this plant from the University of Chittagong, especially the hilly area of the Chittagong University. This is the same plant, but uh, 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 it has different species. It has the same genus, but different species. So this is the synthesis process of uh, uh, silver nanoparticle, which we actually is is what we say. So this is the plant powder. We just collected the plant leaf and making it powder. And then we used this powder to synthesize silver nanoparticles from the silver salt, like silver nitrate. Next. So after synthesis, the nanoparticle is formed or not. To confirm this, we have characterized this nanoparticle using different techniques. So first of all, uh, we use UV visible spectroscopy, and we see there is a peak here, and this actually primarily confirmed the nanoparticle is formed in the solution. Then uh, after that, we characterize the nanoparticle using next technique. So next, please. So XRD analysis, in, in the XRD analysis, we we would like to actually know the uh, crystallinity of the nanoparticle. If it is crystal, 
If it is polycrystalline, then we can say this is a good nanoparticle. If it is amorphous, then we say uh, it may not be used in uh, some kind of application. So in this analysis, we got the nanoparticles which we have synthesized is polycrystalline in nature. Next. So this is the calculated particles. As I mentioned, we, we are trying to control the size of the nanoparticle. And that's why we have measured the particle size. And we obtained that uh, from the three plants, like OR, AGN, PS, and so on. And we obtained 26 nanometer. We obtained 18 nanometer. We obtained 22 nanometer size of the nanoparticles. So this is the FTIR spectral analysis. As I mentioned, we have used plant extract to synthesize silver nanoparticles. So to confirm any plant metabolite like flavonoids, terpenoids, such kind of biomolecules is there or not. So it seems that we have obtained some functional group like alcohol, aldehyde, or carboxylic acid. This type of functional groups is on the could be on the surface of the nanoparticle. That's actually stabilize the nanoparticle. Okay, next. And this is the image, uh, as I mentioned, the uh, scanning electron microscope. You can see the uh, almost uh, triangle and spherical shape of the nanoparticle, but uh, it has some roughness. Uh, that means it has some porosity of the uh, nanoparticle surface. And this is the TAME analysis. You can see here, more specifically, I mean, more magnified uh, image. You can see the spherical size of the nanoparticle from all the three plots. And, and the later one, you can see the size of the nanoparticle that was calculated from UV, that is calculated from XRD, that is also calculated from the TAME. And all sizes are almost similar. So this actually proved our nanoparticle is are in uh, nano, nanometer in size. This is the antibacterial activity. What we have synthesized, our ultimate goal is to use uh, in, 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 in industrial application or any other biomedical application. That's why uh, we, are, we, we have measured the antibacterial performance of the synthesized nanoparticle. And we used uh, two gram positive and gram negative uh, bacteria. And we saw our nanoparticles work uh, nicely. I mean, uh, they can arrest bacteria. So again, uh, we're targeting textile industry. You know, our tech, we have many, many textile industry. They have used many kinds of uh, dye that is actually used by the textile industry. And they actually throw it uh, from their industry to the, uh, uh, to the lake or river like this. And uh, dye actually pollute the uh, other's environment. So that we need to treat or we need to remove the dye from the uh, uh, dye from the industrial discharge. So that in our case, we are using uh, dye uh, as a methylene blue. You can see the top top uh, figure. I mean the top spectra that is the methylene blue uh, absorption. And when we use our nanoparticle uh, with methylene blue, you can see the spectra is uh, relatively. I mean decreasing to the level and if we if we go to the next slide we can see uh, you see the, this is the, the raw raw methylene blue and after the addition of silver nanoparticle you can see the spectra is here which means that dye actually removed from the water from the aqueous solution so it can be uh, said that we can remove the uh, dye from the aqueous solution even though uh, this is the lab scale research, we can, you can see we almost 87% uh, uh, dye was removed from the water. We are planning to use it in uh, uh, textile industry, industrial discharge water. Uh, we, if we can remove the dye from that water, that will be good uh, in our future ones. Okay, next. So this is the conclusion. Uh, uh, our nanoparticle uh, we have synthesized has antibacterial activity. We are also doing now anti-cancer activity, anti-fungal activity, and some other applications. But still now, here I am presenting our, uh, our nanoparticle has antibacterial activity, and of course, photocatalytic and catalytic activity uh, to remove the dye from the uh, uh, industrial discharge. Okay, next. So uh, now uh, I acknowledge my supervisor, Professor Benny Kumar Day, uh, my uh, and Honorable Professor General of Chicago University. Also, I have collaboration with some of our uh, colleagues from different uh, uh, places and also financial support uh, from the Ministry of Education, 
It's our salon, of course, in the uh, University Grants Commission. And thanks to my students of my biomaterials research group, uh, uh, my students actually have done this work. So thanks uh, to them and thank you all. Okay, thank you, Dr. Shuman Dangovi, for your nice presentation. So, do you have any question? Any question? I have a question. Yes, where have you performed this uh, experiments? I think the XRD chain. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, uh, Atomic Energy Commission. Atomic Energy. How do you have calculated the particle size? Uh, actually, oh, from uh, yeah, from uh, not from XRD. XRD or TEM. Yeah, well, actually, we have calculated the... size of the nanoparticle from UV using my theory. We can calculate size from XRD. We have the uh, Williamson Hall effect and uh, some other uh, theory we can calculate. And from the TEM, we can directly obtain the size. Even from the XRD, we have Debye-Scherer equation. If we can use the visceral equation, we can calculate the size of the nanoparticles. Your XRD, uh, I can see that the one or one peak is very uh, This high. is the so orientation of the orientation. Yeah, yeah, yeah this is the FCC oriented, FCC oriented FCC 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 cubic centered yeah. nanoparticles. So, this is the polycrystalline? It is polycrystalline. It is polycrystalline because ICD it, it, it will well matched with the ICD curve. That is the uh, reference curve. This oil uh, matched with the so that uh, we can use this. Uh, actually, I'm thinking to prepare some kind of filter which can be uh, uh, our nanoparticles can be adjunct to the filter. And if we can place the filter, uh, the, the drainage of the uh, industry where the industrial discharge will come and contact with our filter, and then water will be or dye will be removed from the by the filter and the. Uh, clean water can pass through the river or lakes. I don't know. This is my speculation. Future it's challenging. It's yes, challenging. Yeah. Of course, challenging. Okay, of course. course. Uh, thank you, Dr. Gandhi. Thank you, sir.